Hello everyone! In this video I will demonstrate a simple type of chain strategy called a remote pair. In a previous video, episode 16, I solved a hard level puzzle using this technique and I explained it there, but that's part of a longer video so I figured I should probably make a dedicated lesson on it. So first of all, what is a chain? Well, I like to think of it as a what-if scenario. With a chain, we look at possible numbers and make an assumption that is true, and then follow the implications from it being true to see where it leads. If it leads to a contradiction or an impossible result, then the assumption must be false. This helps us to eliminate candidates and usually helps to solve harder level puzzles. So now that brings us to the remote pair, which is the simplest of the various chaining strategies. With remote pair, we are looking for cells that contain a pair of candidates, meaning only two possible candidates in a cell. There is one more characteristic of remote pair, and that is that the chain has to be at least four cells. In this lesson, I'm going to show you five different examples of remote pair. The first four examples involve four cells. The last example I'm going to show you has six cells. Make sure you watch that one. It's really interesting to follow the chain on that one. Let's take a look at this first example. There's a 3-4 matching pair here in column 5. These two cells are the only cells in column 5 that are either a 3 or a 4. And then we have another matching pair here in row G. Again, the 3 and the 4 can only be in those two cells. And one more matching pair in block 7. And again, the 3 and the 4 can only go in those cells in block 7. So here we have four cells containing a 3-4 pair. And they are linked one to the other by a chain, as you see with these arrows. Now, let's follow the chain making assumptions or inferences. Let's start with the candidate 3 in row B, column 5. Let's make the assumption that it is true. Well, if this 3 is true, then this 3 in the same column can't also be true, so then it must be the 4. Then this can't be a 4, so it must be the 3 and then this would have to be the 4. You see how they alternate between 3 and 4. Or we can make a different assumption and start with the candidate 4 in row B, column 5. So if this cell is a 4, then this 4 in the same column can't be true, so it must be a 3. And then this can't be a 3, so it must be a 4. And then this would have to be the 3. So you see that either way, if this first cell is a 3, then this last cell in the chain has to be the other number, the 4. But if this first cell is the 4, then the last cell in the chain has to be a 3. So if we look at these two cells, the first and last in the chain, this is a 4 cell chain, then one of them is a 3 and the other is a 4, right? So now any cells that see both these two cells can't have 3s or 4s in them. So any 3s or 4s that see both those cells can be eliminated. Can you find a cell that sees both the first and last cells in the chain? Yes, it's this one. This cell is in the same row, row B, as the first cell, and it's in the same column, column 1, as the last cell in the chain. So now this 3 and 4 can be eliminated. As for the terminology, these two pair of 3s and 4s, the first cell and the last cell, are considered the remote pair since they are remotely related through the intermediary cells. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Can you spot the chain in this example? Well, in block 5, we have a 5-9 matching pair. And in column 3, there's also a 5-9 matching pair. Great! Now, let's start with this 5-9 pair. If this is a 5, then this must be a 9. 
and then this has to be a 5, and then this is a 9. Following? Or, if this is a 9, then this must be a 5, and then this is a 9, and then this is a 5. You see how they alternate between the 5 and the 9. So either way, these two cells, the first cell and the last cell, are a remote pair. And if one is a 5, then the other is a 9, and vice versa. That means that any cells that see both remote pair cells cannot be a 5 or a 9. Can you find a cell that sees both the first and last cells in the chain? So this cell is in the same column as the first cell and in the same row as the last cell. So any 5 or 9 in this cell can be eliminated. It has a 5 as a possible candidate, so that now can be eliminated. Okay, how about another example? Let's see if you can find the remote pair here for yourself. There's a 3-7 matching pair here in column 5. But there isn't another 3-7 pair to connect that with. However, do you see all the 2-5 pairs in this puzzle? Yes, there's a 2-5 matching pair in row A, and there's a 2-5 matching pair in blocks 2 and 3, and there's a 2-5 matching pair in column 5. That's a lot of matching pairs. Let's see if we can create a chain and identify the remote pairs. Starting here with this 2-5, I can link it with this 2-5 in the same row. So one of these is a 2 and the other is a 5, but both can't be 2 at the same time, and both can't be 5 at the same time. So let's say this first cell is a 2, then this would be a 5, and then this pair, since it's in the same block, would have to be a 2, which makes this a 5. Or, if the starting cell is a 5, then this would be a 2, and this would be a 5, and the last cell in the chain would be a 2. So this first cell and this last cell is a remote pair. One of those is a 2, and one of those is a 5. Now, any cell that sees both those cells cannot contain a 2 or a 5, and this cell here sees both cells of the remote pair. This cell is in the same column as the first cell in the chain, and it's in the same row as the last cell in the chain, so the two and five candidates in this cell can be eliminated. This chain is sometimes called alternating inference chain, or AIC for short, and that's because we alternate between true and false. If this is true, then this is false. Then this is true, and this is false. So it's an alternating inference chain. Okay, here's one more example involving four cells, and then I'll show you a more complicated chain involving six cells. So there's a 1-6 pair in row C here, and there's a 1-6 pair in column 7. And there's a 1-6 pair in row D. There are some more 1-6 pairs in the grid. For example, there's a 1-6 pair in block 3, and another 1-6 pair in row E, and also in column 8. We can follow those to create a chain, but they won't result in any cells that see each other, so that we can eliminate candidates, and that's the whole idea. But, if we start the chain with the 1-6 pair in row C, column 5, and end the chain with the 1-6 pair in row D, column 6, then we will find a cell that sees both the first cell and the last cell, and it has candidates that we can eliminate. So let's do this step by step. If this first cell in row C, column 5, is a 1, then this had to be a 6 and then this is a 1, and then this is a 6. Or the other way around, if the first cell is a 6, then the next cell is a 1, and the next is a 6, and the last is a 1. So either way, when we look at this remote pair, one of them is a 1, and the other one is a 6. So now this cell here, 
sees both of these two cells. It's in the same column as the first cell and in the same block as the last cell. So the one and the six in this cell can be eliminated. Okay, so now that you understand what a remote pair is and how to use it with four cells, let's take a look at a more complicated example. Can you find the remote pair here? I'll give you a hint. It starts with the 5-6 pair here in row A, column 1. Now, there are multiple cells with a 5-6 pair in them, but they don't all help us eliminate candidates, and that's the idea here, to eliminate possible candidates in other cells. So let's follow this 5-6 pair here in column 1. This pair is in the same column, so they would have alternate values. In other words, if one is a 5, the other is a 6, and if one is a 6, the other is a 5. Okay, now let's continue with the chain. Here is another 5-6 pair in the same block, block 7. And again, if one is a 5, the other is a 6, and vice versa. The next cell in this chain is here, this 5-6 in the same row. And then the next cell is this 5-6 in the same column, column 8. And then finally, this is the last cell in the same row. So now we can see this chain has six cells linked together, and the remote pair consists of these two cells. With four cells in a chain, we can simply look at the first and last two cells to eliminate candidates. But with a six cell chain or longer, we have alternating values in between, not just at the beginning of the chain or at the end of the chain. Okay, let's start with the first cell and last cell of the chain. Are there any cells that see both and also have a 5 or a 6 that we can eliminate? Yes, this cell sees both. It's in the same block, block 1, as the first cell, and in the same column, column 3 of the last cell, and it has a 5 as a possible candidate, so now that can be eliminated. Anything else? Yes, this is a remote pair as well if we started the chain here as a four cell chain. This would be the first cell and this would be the last cell. And now this cell sees both. It's in the same column, column two, as the first cell. And it's in the same block, block four, as the last cell. So now this is also a remote pair and the five in this cell can be eliminated. Once you know what to look for, you will probably spot many of these chains and they will really help solve harder level puzzles if you're stuck. So make sure to look out for them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe for more lessons and Solve With Me episodes. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.